One question I was asking myself when I first started shortcuts is, do people actually find this useful? In this video, we'll go over some of the basics of Apple shortcuts and get you on your way to making your first shortcut and saving time throughout your day. Hi everyone, I'm Bill. I'm a mechanical engineer and project manager. And I use Apple shortcuts often in my personal productivity workflow to help me save time and get things done faster. If you're in the Apple ecosystem and you're not using Apple shortcuts, you are definitely wasting time. So let's jump on in here and I'll get to showing you some of the basics. I'll be using the Mac as my demonstrator today. So when you pull up shortcuts for the first time, yours will likely look different than mine. I have a number of different sections and folders. Each one of these rectangles represents a different shortcut. And you can see on the left-hand side in the navigation bar, we have shortcuts, share sheet, actions, menu bar, and then the various folders that I have created. So if you're brand new to shortcuts, think about it as a way to automate different actions within your Apple devices, or you can even use it to automate things within your home via the iPhone and iPad app in the automation section. So starting out, I find the gallery is a great place to start browsing and really understand what shortcuts is, how it functions, and can spark ideas on how you might want to use this in your daily workflow. So let's jump in here. This one looks fun. How many days until? So when you click on the shortcut, it'll give you a description. See how many days there are until a milestone of your choice. For example, you can count down birthday, next big trip and more. So clicking the three dot icon in the top right, this screen shows you the actions that the shortcut is going to run. So this shortcut will take a text input, the specified date and the date that you're trying to figure out how many days until, and then it'll spit those things out. So let's add this shortcut. When is the event you are counting down to? Today is August 3rd, 2023, so let's just say August 4th, 2024. What is the name of the event one year from now? Add shortcut. So when I go over to my shortcuts, that puts this in the top left-hand corner. And when I run that shortcut, it'll tell me how many days there are till August 4th, 2024. One year from now is the event name that I gave it. It's in one year, one day, 17 hours and 14 minutes. That seems accurate. So that's a pretty simple and silly example uh, of how to use shortcuts and how a basic shortcut functions. So you can find things for organization in here, renaming files, tiling windows, split screening windows, making memes, animating texts, making GIFs, time tracking, reading modes, collaboration, daily stand-up. Prompts a list of questions to ask each day. So this would be useful in a work environment. If you're working with yourself or with a team, you could use this daily stand-up, send you prompts. What are you gonna get done today? Is there anything in your way? I actually like this a lot. Then it formats this in a text form that you could share with others. So it's automatically sharing it. So each one of these actions are tied together and the shortcut is running each one of these actions every time you would press the play button. So that's kind of the power of Apple shortcuts and why it's so useful. There's also a great starter shortcuts section here in the gallery view. And a lot of these pre-made shortcuts could be extremely useful. So Take a look. I encourage you to browse around and start to think about different areas or actions that you do on a daily basis on either your computer or your phone or your iPad and just jot down the steps that you do for now. Eventually you want to take that list and see which ones of those that you could automate into a shortcut that would be useful and not too complicated. I like to try to keep these things as simple as possible. And that's my tip. I've seen a lot of complicated workflows passing information 
into and out of Apple shortcuts, and it just becomes really messy to me. And it and a lot of those workflows seem like you're using shortcuts because you think it saves time, but in reality, the amount of time that you spend creating those shortcuts to get two apps to talk to each other that weren't designed to talk to each other is just a waste of time in my opinion. So I have a couple of sections here and I'll just walk you through how I do this. My top row, I do this because when you look at a widget on an iPad, you get four shortcuts shown on the smaller widget and same on the iPhone. And you can scroll between two different widgets. So you can drop a box of four and a box of four on top of each other. So I'd be able to see all eight of these shortcuts in the top row. And admittedly, I kind of now thinking about what I use most often. Uh, you might be wondering what auto lock is. So if you use your iPad or iPhone for fitness related activities and you don't want your screen to shut off during that time, if you have a timer app open or maybe you just jotted down in a note what your workout routine was going to be for the day and you don't want to have to keep locking, unlocking your phone during the workout, uh, the easiest way I could find to do this was actually to create a shortcut to go to the settings page. So certain pages within settings of iPhone and iPad actually have a URL, just like any other web page. So this shortcut is just opening the URL to the auto lock setting for screen time and then you can set it to auto off time being never. Instead of having to navigate into settings, into screen, and then into always on time, so that's three clicks or three pushes of buttons, shortcuts become searchable in Siri search or spotlight search. So you can quickly pull down on the iPhone, type in auto, and this auto lock shortcut will come up if you don't have it in a widget or readily available on your home screen. The other thing that might be of interest to you that I don't use as often anymore, even though it's called Create Daily Journal, uh, this shortcut works in conjunction with Apple Notes and will create a daily journal page for me in the correct folder. So if I open this up to edit, so I have a little bit of header text here. I like to grab the current location and the weather. And then in the text, I obviously want today's date at the top of the page, the location and the weather conditions. And I put the hashtag daily journal in there automatically. So when I open up the note, all I have to do is hit enter, hashtag registers, and then it's easy to find all of my journal entries, even though they are already in a folder called journal in my Apple notes. So anytime you run this shortcut, it's going to pull the latest weather. It's going to pull your latest location and the latest date. And this little line here shows you that the weather conditions are connected to this text box. And then the text box is connected to Apple Notes. And you see what it's doing is creating a note with the text above. And journal is the folder within Apple Notes that it places. So I found myself creating a note over and over again when I wanted to journal and shortcuts actually works really well with Apple Notes and Apple Notes really doesn't have any automation built in. So shortcuts is the way to do it and it's been extremely helpful for me here. The Daily Journal was one of my most used. I have a couple other templates that I've set up in shortcuts as well for Apple Notes. Like I said, Apple Notes, you can kind of create a template note and then you have to duplicate it every time. I do the same thing with book notes, show you that quickly. What's the title of the book? Who's the author? What's the category? I find that Apple Notes is actually really good for taking book notes because it's so easy to scan things in with your iPhone. 
dump pictures in. It's just a great holding place. Search is really good in Apple Notes. Uh, and I'll get off my soapbox here. So that should get you started with Apple shortcuts. At least, like I said, step one is think about actions that you take in a repetitive fashion every day. Think about it as if you spent a minute on a task every day for a year. That's 365 minutes that you could have spent doing something else if you can simplify that down into a shortcut that may only take a few seconds to run. So while there's some time required up front to do kind of this thinking and admittedly there is a lot of trial and error involved with shortcuts and setting up shortcuts. So with that said, if you get stuck, there is a shortcuts community on Reddit that's very helpful as well. And this is a great place to just go and browse and see how other people are using shortcuts to also spark ideas on how, may, how you might be able to use shortcuts as well. And sometimes these get really complicated, but it is, it is pretty amazing to see what people have come up with. Now that said, you can add shortcuts from the internet. Just, you know, be careful downloading shortcuts off the internet. Make sure you trust the source if you're going to do that. Some of the ones that I have here in my shortcuts, Untitled Site from Chris Lawley. He's got a great list of shortcuts. Um, a lot of his are super complicated though and use a, a few different apps. Um, but his all work well. If you're using the apps that he uses, you know, Drafts and Fantastical and some of the other uh, back-end items he uses to manage things, he understands this stuff probably better than most people. And then some apps, uh, Things is kind of a task manager on in the Apple ecosystem. And Things has really started to run recently with Apple shortcuts. They've created a bunch of their own. All of these here were created by the company who created Things. Uh, so you can do weekly review, year review, running an inbox rule, adding tasks to, to Things to quickly get stuff in. And Things is a great app. Um, I don't really use it too much anymore, but I'm sure I'll be back at some point. One question I was asking myself when I first started Shortcuts is, do people actually find this useful? I couldn't quite wrap my head around why I wanted to open another app on my phone just to click a button and do a few things at the same time. And my thinking was a little bit off there because you can do things like Put these on widgets. You can put app icons for shortcuts in your dock on an iPad or a Mac. And so you don't really have to do the extra step of opening the app, finding the shortcut, then clicking. To me that was always, why am I doing three steps to do one step? And it's taken me a long time to find how I actually like to use shortcuts which is how I use it here. I basically use it as sort of a template maker for Apple Notes. But ever since I've sort of decomplicated shortcuts and realized it's not an end-all be-all, it doesn't do everything that you'll probably want it to do. Uh, it's not the smartest tool out there and it's a little bit finicky. It's a little bit limited in the terms of actions that it can run unless you have some coding background. But it's helpful, I consider myself kind of an everyday person, right? It's it's helpful for everyday people who don't really understand. Uh, you know, I'm not able to go write a Python script or Java or, you know, whatever to go write macros. And I, I've never really been interested in that either or learning it. So it's kind of like a drag and drop visual tool that uh, us normal people or us cavemen can uh, understand. And it's, it can actually be really useful and really powerful within the Apple ecosystem to save you time for things you do over and over again. So I hope this video was useful. Hope you've got some good information here. That's it. Take care. Thanks for watching.